A few moments ago, Buckingham Palace announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. We're interrupting our programs to inform you Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has died. Siamo uh, Buckingham Palace a mezzasta, è morta la regina Elisabetta II. Queen Elizabeth II, the longest serving monarch of the United Kingdom, has died. La reine Elisabeth II est morte à l'âge de 96 ans. Dont... Königin Elisabeth II is tot. My family and I have been watching the news for the last couple of hours, just watching um, all the sort of memorial sort of things of the Queen's life. I just can't believe she's gone. Um, oh. I always knew that the day the Queen died would be a very sad day, and I knew I wanted to pay my respects in some way. Tuning in to the live broadcasts throughout the entire week of mourning, I was moved by the sheer amount of people that gathered just to see her coffin. Seeing the thousands of cars and people that had lined the main roads just to see the hearse drive by that was taking her coffin around the UK, and the hundreds of thousands of people who queued overnight across London for miles, reaching 10 miles and over 25 hours of queuing wait time at its peak. And even though we were warned about the wait time, thousands still turned up continuously for those four days that she was lying in state, just to see her coffin for a few moments to pay their respects. It was quite astounding. I considered queuing, but I decided I wanted to attend her funeral to pay my respects instead. And to ensure that I would actually be able to see her coffin, I came to the realization that I would need to wait there overnight on my own because no one else could come with me. I had seen videos of people who had done this before for the Jubilee and I wasn't really sure if I was gonna be there alone or if there'd be many people there already, but I just decided to brave it. I made a plan of where I would head. I packed some warm clothes, loads of snacks, a flask of tea, a yoga mat to sleep on and a chair, and off I went at 9 p.m. ready to face a night on the streets of London. So this is a map of the procession route. There's Buckingham Palace and this is where I planned to head. I'm currently making my way around towards the mall but the main road towards it has been like diverted so we're having to go another way but I'm already seeing loads of people who are making their way there like families and just like normal people on their way already and it's only half 11. So I got to the mall, ignore the fact that I called it a mall the whole time anyway. So the mall was a lot busier than I anticipated. Some people had actually already been there for days, camping at the barriers, and there was not a single spot left down the mall. I knew that there would be people there already, but I did not expect it to be the extent that it was. There were families and children and tents everywhere. There was even port and cafes and a medical tent, which I did not expect at all. I'm walking still down the mall and currently it is packed, no free spots along the railings. So we're going to keep walking and just have a, like, a walk around and then figure out where to set up base for the night. I don't know how these people got on this side of the railings but we'll have to ask. It was at this point that I ran into two lovely ladies, Janet and Becky, and a marshal told us that it was the accessible area, but nobody had set up camp behind it yet. So that is where we decided to stay and it turned out to be a very good decision. With a lot of time to kill, Janet and I decided to visit the flower tribute in Green Park and I'd never seen anything like it. Wow, this is absolutely amazing, all of the flowers. There was just flowers as far as the eye could see. Um, I've never seen anything like it. It was kind of made in a way that you could walk around it. There was teddies and the trees were decorated. There was letters. There was things that like things in binders that schools had made. It was just so much. There was like a sculpture of the queen's head and it was like all sparkly. I forgot to get a picture of it. And this was day 10. So the flower, a lot of the flowers were wilting by this point, but I have never seen anything like it. It was quite quite moving to see that amount. That wasn't even all the flowers as well. There was like tons more all around the park. And also um, obviously there was loads more at Windsor and Balmoral. It's currently quarter to two 
Um, we've just been to see the flower arrangements where they've put all of the flowers left for the queen and all the letters and all the teddies. It was absolutely immense. I've never seen that many flowers. It was actually quite moving as well. Like it was crazy. It's still packed. All along the mall is completely packed. Like people have full on set up like actual campsites. I had no idea it would be like this. So we've managed to find a spot just behind the disabled barrier. We might be able to see a little bit, but hopefully we'll see enough. We have 10 hours to go. I've made friends with these two ladies who I've basically set up camp with with uh, and they're very nice but now i'm going to go to the loo and then i'm probably going to have a cup of tea so i had my tea and my biscuits and this was our setup for the night there was honestly people everywhere just people sleeping in random places so many more people than i thought the snacks definitely helped and a packet of sweets was also a lifesaver and it actually only got down to about nine degrees celsius but it was still very very cold for some reason because i guess we weren't moving we were just sitting there like for the whole night so i was glad i bought so many um layers and a hat was definitely needed and like woolly socks i also lent my yoga mat to becky and um, we all kind of shared my chair throughout the night this was what the mall looked like we were kind of at the middle of the mall about 13 flags in and this is what it looked like at about three in the morning did you get sleep yeah yeah i got about an hour so that was good I don't know how because i'm freezing now oh yeah <laughs> oh I managed to get an hour of sleep between four and five, but I woke up absolutely freezing. My toes were numb. So whenever I got too cold, I just drank more tea and biscuits, which really helped. And luckily my huge flask of tea lasted until the next day. Then at around six, we tuned in to see the last lot of people going through the lying in state. And at 6.30, we watched the very last person go through to pay their respects. And apparently this lady actually queued twice, bless her. And at 6.30 on Monday the 19th, that was the end of the lying in state. Yeah. Testing the speakers and they're just putting on some music. <laughs> It's currently about 7 a.m. and it's starting to fill up quite considerably. Still quite empty in front of us because it's the accessible area. Apologies for my shoddy camera work here, but I didn't want to make people uncomfortable being filmed, so I tried to be quick, but this is what it looked like behind us and to the side. I got my makeup out and I did my makeup. It might seem really weird that I brought it with me, but I thought it would kill time and I also wanted to look presentable for the funeral. This is the first thing we've seen since we've been here. Good morning. Please refrain from waving large flags on poles as these will restrict the view of others. Thank you for your assistance. Okay. <laughs> about half nine still not much has happened yet i keep going for a wee because i'm drinking so much tea so i keep needing to go to the toilet luckily we're right by the loos but yeah the crowds are really big now luckily we've still secured our place right at the front <laughs> so i'm here with janet and becky who are two lovely ladies that i've met today how do you guys feel about being here excited now we got through the night yeah Night was okay. Between six and seven, six and eight was a little bit hard. We did a bit of a boost, but the atmosphere has boosted me up. It's amazing, amazing experience. And when did you guys arrive here? Half eleven last night. <laughs> nice. So it's been ten hours so far. What does it mean to you to be here for the Queen, or what does the Queen mean to you? My granny's talking no. to me every that the whole family, so I'm sort of here with them because I wouldn't be saying to the whole family if it wasn't with them. I just thought she'd be yeah, uh, really excited just to say goodbye. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to pay my respects <laughs> and be part of history. <laughs> Indeed. Well, thank you guys. Two hours left to wait and we've got a good viewing spot. So excited to say our goodbyes. Sad, but also excited. <laughs> So that was King Charles, followed by the rest of the family on their way to the closed funeral at Westminster Abbey. Oh, 
and at 11 a.m. the funeral started and the police and palace guards assumed their position along the Mall. The funeral was broadcast on the speakers so all of us could hear and only a few people could get enough connection to watch it live so everyone was kind of huddled around people's phones and tablets to get a glimpse of what was going on at Westminster Abbey. <laughs> Slowly, the coffin is borne into the abbey, inching forward, step by step. And after 12 hours of waiting, the procession finally began and I decided not to take any photos or videos because I just wanted to be fully present. But Janet and Becky kindly sent me some of their footage, which I'll show. And we managed to find a clip of us from the BBC coverage. You can just about see us briefly as the camera pans across, although you can only barely see me, but I've put a little arrow where I am. And the army. Hundreds of representatives with arms reversed as a sign of mourning. And this was the moment the Queen's coffin passed by us. Everyone was silent except for a few gasps and sighs. Many were filming, many were crying and emotional. As her coffin wheeled past, I bowed my head. I said thank you in my heart and I blew her a kiss. And before we knew it, she was gone. So it's all over. It was really overwhelming. I'm definitely glad I came. It was definitely worth waiting 12 hours. <laughs> Once in a lifetime kind of thing. So I'm really glad I came. Woo! Yeah. Dodging people. I wanted to go and see the flower tribute before I left because I only get to, I got to see it in the dark. But they've now closed it. So I'm gonna head back to the train station. Go home now and go to bed and eat something. <laughs> I made my way back towards Charing Cross, but that road was also blocked, so we had to go around. I went past the Horse Guards Parade where I took these photos, and then I stopped in the park, had some lunch, like ate the rest of my snacks because I was so hungry. And then we were directed all the way around to the only exit right at the back. I was told there was no way back to Charing Cross except to get on a tube. I then took these photos of this funny little building, which I just thought looked really odd. <laughs> anyway, so that tube station was closed. So at this point, nobody really knew where to go. Okay, so getting out has been a nightmare. There seemed like there was only one exit that they were funneling everyone through. You couldn't get to Charing Cross because they blocked off all the roads that could possibly get to Charing Cross. They blocked off all the bridges. So I've been sent like quite a while in the opposite direction. And now my best bet is to get to Charing Cross, even though Charing Cross is right next to where I was in the first place. I'm struggling a little bit with all my stuff and my backpack's super heavy. I've been walking for a good 40 minutes now. It was really surreal seeing the streets of London like completely like empty and just just the people from the funeral were just being funneled out of London. Anyway, so we all somehow made it to Victoria Station where I got on a tube um, and headed back to Charing Cross Station. And then I missed my stop and ended up at Temple Station, had to switch over, get a train back to Embankment, walked up, bought a souvenir, somehow lost my souvenir, got on the train and headed home. This had all taken so long that by the time I was on the train, the Queen's Coffin had already arrived at Windsor Castle and was making its way down the long walk. So I managed to watch the rest of the funeral on my train journey home. Oh, good morning. It is the next day. It is Tuesday. I feel absolutely dreadful. I think I've come down with something. I don't know if it was just from being cold all night or just I got germs in my system somehow aching all over so i watched the rest of the funeral on the train ride home pretty much as soon as i got on the train i whipped it on my phone and the whole rest of the funeral lasted my whole journey as soon as she went in the ground and the funeral was over um i got to my stop and i was literally like was really struggling to stay awake i kept almost dropping my phone <laughs> but I was really trying to stay awake. I chewed some gum and that actually helped 
still feel like crap. It was all worth it. I'm so glad I did it. I'm so glad I was there. I don't quite know how to feel about it because, you know, I feel like there's so much anticipation. You're not seeing the queen. There's no magic of the queen there. There's no excitement of her anymore it was her coffin and i understood that but i still I, my brain couldn't quite comprehend it until i saw it i didn't quite know how i'd feel seeing it with my own eyes it's a difficult one because sometimes you big yourself up to feel a certain feeling and you don't quite understand how you're feeling i'm sure a lot of people might be able to relate to that if you went to see her lying in state or if you saw the procession if you were lucky enough to get a front row seat it was still very sad it was still quite emotional but it did give a kind of closure it kind of felt quite special that we were seeing her out of london we're seeing her past buckingham palace for the last time ever um her body at least so it felt special to be a part of that i should add in that i actually got interviewed by belgium tv a lady with a microphone came up to me and a guy with a camera uh, she said she was from Belgium TV. Um, she did a little interview with me, asked me loads of questions. I assume they'll just use one of the questions. By that time, Janet and Becky had gone, so there was no one to like film it happening. So I have no evidence of that happening, but hopefully I can maybe find it. If you're from Belgium, maybe you saw it on Belgium TV. Still got our flags out on our balcony. Things will never be the same again. It is definitely a different, it feels like a different kind of England without her. It was almost like the Queen is what made England England if you know what I mean if you're very patriotic she was an icon like the mascot of Great Britain the mascot of London and without her it's kind of like who are we now I don't know if anyone feels that but I, I've never even been a huge royalist but I've always loved the Queen the idea of her whether I know her or not and now she's gone and I do feel really, really sad about that. I don't know much about Charles, so I have no idea what he'll be like. And the only thing I know about him that I like is that he's very big on the environment. I hope that he'll keep um, fighting for the environment, at least. I wish him good luck. I hope he does well. With all that being said, thank you, dear Queen, for doing a fantastic job. I'm glad that she's laid to rest. She's finally free. Please subscribe to my channel and check out more of my videos. I also have an Instagram account, Isabella DeMarco. I also have Patreon. Everything is always down in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Happy Jubilee, man. And thank you for everything. That's very kind.